This video is going to be on red blood cell morphology, and I have pictured here a normal red blood cell, so you can compare all the abnormal ones. The first abnormal red blood cell morphology is the echinocyte. This is the most common abnormal red cell morphology, but it's also the most nonspecific. So there's lots of different things that could cause this morphology, so much so that it's not clinically helpful. The echinocytes have many projections that are all regular, so they're all the same height, width, and they're evenly distributed around the cell. The acanthocyte, however, has multiple irregular projections. So there's some fat ones, some skinny ones, some tall ones, some short ones, and they're all unevenly distributed around the cell. A keratocyte is also known as a blister cell. It essentially has a small blister on the edge of the red cell. And if this blister were to break, it would then produce two teeth. So you can think of it as Dracula teeth sticking off. If one of Dracula's teeth were to fall out, then Dracula would, Dracula would be left with one tooth. So you can think of this as a toothless Dracula. All three of these morphologies are all called keratocytes. The next morphology is the schistocyte. This is a fragmented red blood cell. It's essentially been sheared, so you have a smaller volume cell with irregular borders. The spherocyte is a very round cell with no central pallor. It looks smaller than a normal red blood cell, and it looks more red. Spherocytes are spherical, so it looks like a ball. It's lost its biconcave shape, and this is indicative of immune-mediated hemolytic anemia. Now you do have to be careful when you identify spherocytes because if you look at red cells out at the feathered edge, all of them will take on a spherocyte morphology. So you have to be sure you're in the monolayer when you're identifying spherocytes. Also, spherocytes are only able, you're only able to recognize spherocytes in the dog, and that's because dogs normally have central pallor. Our other species, cats, horses, they can normally have no central pallor, so spherocytes are more easily recognized in the dog. The next morphology is a Heinz body. This is an aggregate of hemoglobin that's been oxidatively damaged and is forming a ball, and that hemoglobin aggregate is projecting out from the red blood cells, pushing the membrane out. So it looks like there's a nose on the red blood cell. This is if the nose is projecting out, but if the nose were projecting out at you from the slide, then it would look like a pale circle in the red blood cell. An eccentrocyte is also an oxidatively injured red blood cell, but this time the membrane is fused together. So part of the membrane is fused, and it's pushed the rest of the hemoglobin to the other side of the cell. So that's why one side of the cell looks diffusely red, whereas the other side of the cell looks pale. If you were to cut this red blood cell and then turn it 90 degrees, then you'd, you could see the fused center or the fused area on the right and then all of the, all of the hemoglobin pushed to the left. A macrocyte is a large red blood cell, and a microcyte is a small red blood cell. Polychromasia, or polychromatophil, is a red blood cell that has a blue cast to it. That's a younger red blood cell. A howl jolly body is a nuclear remnant within the red blood cell. It looks like a very deeply basophilic, almost black circle within the red blood cell. And you can think of this kind of like the red cell has a beauty mark on it. Basophilic stippling is when there's many pinpoint blue dots diffuse throughout the cytoplasm of the red blood cell. It kind of looks like the red cell has blue chicken pox. And then the last morphology is the target cell. It essentially looks like a target. So there's a, a dark area of red, and then a light area, and then a darker area. If you were to cut the cell in half, and then again, turn it 90 degrees facing you, it looks like three bubbles stuck together. 
Okay, so what what do all of these red cell morphologies mean? Well, we'll go back over to the left side of this image. The acanthocyte, blister cell, or keratocyte and schistocyte, those all occur with fragmentation. The schistocyte is the most specific for, for fragmentation, and that's because the acanthocyte can also occur with liver disease or certain lipid disorders. And the keratocytes can also occur with oxidative injury to the red blood cell. The spherocyte indicates IMHA. There's other rare causes, causes of spherocyte formation, but for this class, we're just going to focus on spherocytes equal IMHA. Heinz bodies and eccentrocytes indicate oxidative injury to the red blood cell. And all of the morphologies on the right, polychromasia, hal jolly bodies, basophilic stippling, and target cells, those can all occur with red cell regeneration. But polychromasia is the only one that's specific for red blood cell regeneration. Hal jolly bodies can occur with bone marrow disease, so dysplasia of the bone marrow, or if the spleen is not functioning normally. So normally low numbers of Hal Jolly bodies do make it out into circulation, and the splenic macrophages are responsible for removing those Hal Jolly bodies. So if there's splenic disease, there's less removal of those Hal Jolly bodies. Basophilic stippling can also occur with lead toxicity, and target cell formation can also occur with iron deficiency, as well as various liver diseases and lipid disorders.